One last trainer, and then we can move on to something else at long freaking last. I'll be honest, I was kind of getting tired of these, of these sports domes, but then again, this is a, a, strategic, a strategic choice that I decided to, to, to do, and I still uh, stand by it. And wow, this is probably the most lopsided matchup ever. Ouch, 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 ouch. That is going to hurt really bad. Down goes Mantike. Next up we have Scolipede. I guess I'm going to go with Dragonite with um, Stab Fly, which should be able to do uh, horrible, horrible damage to it. That is, well, it's probably going to die because Scolipede is hardly known for its bulk. Oh, that was actually a pretty good move considering I'm about to use a two-turn move, but that's not going to save it in the long term. That's still probably one of the best moves it could consider uh, doing, especially if the alternative was Steamroller, which wouldn't surprise me at all. And that is it! We are done with the Sports Domes! So, I'll see you next time when I do something. I haven't decided yet, but you're going to have a look at it right now. Hey, guys! Look what I found! Yanma Swarm on Route 14! So, let's head over there right now. As I've said before, I was trying to get a Yanma Swarm so that I could steal a Wide Lens from one of these to give it to Mian Shao. Now I looked up what can learn Thief, and I was thinking to give it to Tyranitar temporarily, of course. Unfortunately, as it turns out, Tyranitar cannot learn Thief, so I'm going to bring uh, Sigilith out of uh, retirement temporarily. I'm going to overwrite Hypnosis with Thief, and if I ever need Hypnosis Sigilith again for some reason, then I'm just going to head back to uh, the Move Relearner and uh, do that. So, yeah, Yanma has a 40% chance of appearing when there's a swarm on Route 14, and... Each Yanma has a 5% chance of carrying a Wide Lens, so we're pretty much talking about the same realm of probabilities as when I was looking for that Trace route back at the beginning of my Emerald LP. So, we could be here a while, folks! So, uh, but of course I'm not going to subject you to absolutely every part of the search. I'm going to skip ahead a bit and... Yeah, Tropius, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna run since, well, I already retired Sigilith, so um, it doesn't need the experience. So what do we got here? A Yanma! So this is going to be attempt number one of, I'm sort of hoping one, but it's probably gonna be many, 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 many attempts. And, oh, great. We're gonna be playing that game on top of that. So I'm gonna have to backtrack to the Pokemon Center twice as fast, since these will just love using Detect in my face. And this one did not have anything, it seems. So, um, hang on a second! Did I remove... Did I really forget to remove the... Oh, right. I already removed it off-screen. So, yeah, of course the item slot needs to be empty. Wide Lens Bagfuck! And it took almost no time if you look at the clock. It was like my fourth or fifth Yanma. I lost count. But the important thing is it took almost no time at all and I have my Wide Lens which I will equip on Mian Chao right the fuck away. Because I really needed to make him high jump kick, and soon stone edge, more uh, reliable, it's especially important with high jump kick considering that I lose half my HP if I miss. So I'm, I'm just going to deposit um, Sigilith in the PC and, uh, get, and uh, get back all uh, my regular team members back in the party. Of course a bit of healing first since uh, it took me some uh, Thief PP and well I guess I'm never going to use that again but uh, still. Better, better safe than sorry just in case I need to steal something else later on and I haven't realized it yet.
So, now that that's done, we can move on with the game proper, and we're going to start off by rounding up a few of the Plasma Sages that uh, Looker asked up to capture, so I'll see you then. At the very bottom of Charge Stone Cave, at the southernmost uh, extremity of the second basement, you can find Bronius here. Unfortunately, he's just not going to uh, be taken without a fight, because we're going to have to fight these two Plasma Grunts. And uh, as a side note, now that we have Zekrom, well, I've already mentioned before that you can use um, Pedal Dance to uh, take down uh, Boldors without uh, much regard for your PP, but uh, using Zekrom might also not be a bad idea considering that uh, Terra Vault bypasses sturdy, so if you want to take it down in one hit so as to not take any damage, well of course you need to have a pretty decent level advantage since um, Boldor has pretty nice defense, but you can do that, you can use um, Zekron to take him out in one hit. Uh, anyway, while I'm fighting these two grunts, Something that uh, went pretty much overlooked because of the Sylveon announcement that I'm still not going to talk about today, I'm going to come back to it at a later date, is that uh, Pokemon Rumble U has been announced on the Wii U, and I just wanted to ask, what's the point of that? We already just got a Rumble title on the 3DS that features every single Pokemon, well, except maybe for some of the Generation 5 events, but aside from that, it's got, it's got them all, and so what the hell is the point of making another one so soon in the same generation on the Wii U? Couldn't they at least just wait until Generation 6 was out and uh, cram those extra Pokemon on top of that to make it a more interesting title? I don't know, it's ju it, it just... It, it just reeks of bad decision making for me. Like, it's totally redundant. And, well, granted, it's not the first time that um, uh, we get the, the, the second title of a series of spin offs in the same generation. Uh, we've had it with, um, with the Mystery Dungeon We Wear, which was complete garbage, as well as Ranger 3, which, at the very least, had the benefit of featuring quite a few differences from the Ranger 2, including um, including a different uh, roster and so on and so forth, different story, different everything. So I could sort of understand that. However, Rumble on the Wii U, no, I think I, I think I'm gonna pass on this one, unless it's really that much better than uh, Rumble 2. But I it, it, they they got a, a big job ahead of them of themselves, you know. Um, May I sell me on that game. Anyway, the last Pokemon goes down, and I am not really sure what Bronius tried to accomplish by having me fight his two grunts here. I mean, I beat Anne and gets this one after the other, so what made him think that two simple grunts could stop me? I don't care if their levels were even higher. It, it, you know it's just in terms of, you know, gameplay terms, and it has nothing to do with lore. So he's going to give you um, a TM of a Rock Polish. Each of the Sages is going to give you a different stat of TM. We're going to have Rocks, Rock Polish, Double Team, Hone Claws, Bulk Up, Calm Mind, and one other I'm forgetting. But um, anyway, now that we have successfully rounded up Bronius, now is the time that Looker arrives to um, do absolutely nothing but take him away, I guess. Those Sinnoh people, I swear. And this isn't just for this one either. Looker is always going to come in just as the, just as the job has already been done. So remember when I said nothing could ever top Cynthia? Well, that's still the case, but it's getting dangerously close for my liking. But anyway, seems like Bronius is interested in talking, but unfortunately he's going to discover that uh, Looker isn't interested in arguing over which pony is his favorite or whatever. So, now that all these guys are gone, I'm going to use uh, my Mian Chao's dig to get out of here faster. Which reminds me, now would be a good time to get rid of it and uh, put Rock Slide in its place instead since I now have the... Uh, wide lens equipped. The reason why I'm about to do this 
is because Rock and Fighting have great coverage synergy together, and of course Rock Slide has that sexy 30% flinch chance on top of that, whereas Dig, it takes two turns, which could be, which could put me at a disadvantage, especially if someone decides to use Earthquake while I'm underground or whatever. So, Mian Shao now has learned Rock Slide! Now there's just one more thing that I want to do before I cut away, and that is fly away to um, Accumula Town. Because of course the next sage that I'm going to uh, to uh, capture is located on Route 18, and this is the closest Pokémon Center. And since this is Route 18, remember how I turned down the Larvesta egg earlier on before I because I didn't have. The, any room in my party? Well, now I'm going to take care of this. I'm gonna have Dragonite sit on the PC for a little while so I can grab that egg. So see you then. This is the building that's located on Route 18 where you can obtain Larvesta. So, yes, I am going to take uh, that egg. Not that I'm gonna be using Larvesta or anything in this let's play. This is just for completion's sake, I guess. And every time I get so something like this where I can't get anything because my party's full, I can't help but think about how in Generation 1 it would be sent directly to your PC. Why hasn't has it still not been implemented? This is part of my wish list for Generation 6, in fact, that they would do something like that again. So, this one, Rude, actually becomes the second-in-command of the old Team Plasma in... Um, Black and White 2, so as you can see, he's going to try to atone for what he's done in this game, and as such, he's going to praise N for um, being the kind of guy he is and understanding Pokemon the way he does. And um, he's going to admit as well that, um, yeah, he's pretty gullible when it comes to uh, what gets his said. He can't separate the, the truths from the lies. And, you know, in fact, I'd say he's so gullible as I get the double team TM that, um, I wonder if he took a look at all those Generation 6 rumors, would he fall for them? Would he believe that there is going to be a light type, a sound type, a fairy type, just because Charizard Fan 276 said so? I mean, screw Cerebi, this guy's a chronic liar and a hack. Charizard Fan 276 is by far the most credible source in all things Pokemon. So once again, uh, Looker is going to come in just as I pretty much did everything for him. So, there remains four of the seven sages still at large, and um, I think we have the time to find one more before this video is over. So, away they go, and away I go! In the cold storage, you can head to the end and find that Zinzolin, for some weird reason, has come back here, even though he's notorious for hating the cold. For some reason, he came back here on his own. Even more weird is the fact that it's the Plasma Sage that hates the cold the most that would become the, se the second in command of the new Team Plasma that aims to free Zunova over Batman and Robin style. What sense does that make? Clearly this guy is by far the dumbest of the Seven Sages. Because, uh, well, he, he's gonna talk about, um, you know, how... As all the Sages do, uh, he's going to reflect on what Gensis did for him. And um, I guess that what, we, what he's saying right now, uh, it sort of contradicts a bit with his aims in uh, Black and White 2, I guess. And speaking of which, that line he said about uh, suffering but being alive, you're going to hear it a whole lot in Black and White 2. It's probably his favorite line ever. So, we got a TM for Hone Claws, which I'm going to put to use probably in the next video. And now is the time that Looker chooses to barge in and do his little thing as usual. So, yeah, this is going to be the last Sage that we are going to round up for today. And I, I know you're probably thinking this is already getting a little samey once again. But we're going to get back to battling uh, in, the in the next video because the other three Sages are a bit more difficult to get to. So next time, we're going to head back to the Dream Yard, fight a few trainers, and hopefully 
find the fourth plasma sage. <laughs>